Uh, okay, so the reason why Rivian batteries are dying and, and why Phantom Drain is just getting worse and worse here in early 2025, it's this right here. Now, I don't mean this battery in particular. I'm sure it's handcrafted with care by C&D Technologies somewhere in China, but it's the engineering choices that went behind choosing this battery. It is flat out too small, eh, perhaps physically, but most definitely in capacity. This is a standard internal combustion engine type battery. I think it's from my old Nissan Pathfinder, if I recall correctly. Um, you know, in a standard ICE vehicle, in my experience, the discharge time of the battery to what I'm gonna get worried about whether I can start the vehicle is something like, I don't know, a few weeks at least, a month? Somewhere around there, somewhere in that ballpark? I think the, the most finicky vehicle I ever, uh, well not owned, but took care of was actually a buddy of mine while he was being an expat over in Asia. I took care of his excellent E46 M3 and that you had to drive every week or two or put on a battery tender or you might have trouble going ahead and starting it. This on the other hand, uh, is actually a battery I had sitting around for my APC UPS that powers my computers. This is the battery from the Rivian R1T. It is half the size. And if the Rivian is just sitting there asleep, doing nothing, it will discharge this battery in eight hours. After that, it will go ahead and recharge over the course of just about three hours and then discharge over eight hours. Rinse and repeat back and forth back and forth. And so the problem ultimately here is going to be cycles, right? It's cycling multiple times per day, and that is going to wear the battery, even though it says deep cycle series here, you know, still ultimately a lead acid battery is going to get unhappy eventually with that kind of abuse. This battery under normal operating conditions will die by my estimations. And I'll do all the math and stuff in a bit, but I want to answer the questions up front here first for the impatient out there. This will die in three years. But if you turn on Gary the Gear Guard, that nearly doubles the power used by the vehicle. It goes from one amp to about 1.8 amps. That almost doubles the cycle time. That is going to kill this battery in basically one to two years instead of three. And that is the problem because they're like, who doesn't turn on Gear Guard? And some people may set things incorrectly or not have a safe parking spot at home. And they have gear guard running 24 seven, not just when they're away from home. That will really thrash your battery. It's one of the key reasons why, not the only one, but one of the key reasons why these things are dying so damn quickly. Now let's go to the phantom drain question. So why is phantom drain so bad? Uh, because the vehicle has to turn on and recharge this battery all the time, multiple times per day. What Rivian has figured out is that, well, with gear guard turned on, of course, we're killing the batteries. So to fix this, instead of just allowing the recharging process to go ahead and take its two to three hours, they actually literally have a timer. And essentially they extend out that time when the vehicle is on and idle and with powering the whole 12 volt system and the computers and everything from the high voltage battery pack, it now is on for five hours instead of two to three hours. And so that extends out the cycle time, right? So it keeps from killing these guys so quickly, but oh, it also goes ahead and increases phantom drain. You kind of can't win. Rivian has to make a trade off here somewhere. Now let's go ahead and go up to the computer and take a look at some actual detailed data on what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the DCS 18 UNC R1T. You know, again, I'm sure this is a perfectly reasonable quality, decent AGM lead acid battery. Um, I, I'm not casting doubts upon that in any way. I just think we're overusing this poor thing substantially. So um, the first problem in this data sheet here, and I'll put a link in the video description down below to the data sheet if you wanna look through it yourself. First bullet point right here, long cycle life performance up to 5,000 cycles at a 30% depth of discharge. I, you're going from 100% state of charge to 70% and up and down 5,000 times. So uh, how much are we stressing the battery in the Rivian? Well, check this out. So this is from Electrify. This is uh, yesterday, Monday the 24th. From coming over from the night before, we have an hour and a half worth of idle time. 
Then we have four hours of sleep time. And this is when the vehicle's asleep with the gear guard turned on, burning again 1.8 amps worth of power continuously. And over that four hours, it goes in and uses up that power and it gets down to 12.2 volts. And then it turns on the charging system and it charges here for again, five hours, like I was talking to you folks. And then we go on to do other things, et cetera. So this cycle time is roughly a nine hour cycle time. Let's look at that with an actual voltage graph. So here we are, we're messing around for the first hour and a half or so. Then we have a four hour discharge here down to 12.2 volts. The voltage drops all the way to 12.04 here uh, because essentially as the systems turn on, it actually sucks a bunch of extra amperage out of the battery. So the voltage drops briefly and then the high voltage battery systems turn on and that kicks on the charger. You can see it recharge here, recharging for, I believe I've seen around two hours, 45, two hours and 50 minutes to recharge all of that power that was used. That roughly about uh, eight amp hours or so. And then it drops down to 13 and a half volts and it just sits there looking at you funny for another couple hours. And then again, the vehicle finally goes ahead and goes back to sleep and we start the cycle all over again. How bad is 12.2 volts? Well, that's pretty bad. I mean, people might assume rationally that a 12 volt battery is happy at 12 volts. No, 12 volts is about discharged. Um, really, you should be 13, 13 plus for a 12 volt battery. That's just the way things work. 50% state of discharge is pretty bad. And actually once the battery's capacity starts wearing down, this will get worse. So let's go ahead and go back to the data sheet and scroll down here. So sure, 30% depth of discharge here. And this graph is really weird, by the way, from 100 to 1,000 and then 1,000 to 10,000. So we can see here the 30% depth of the discharge from 1,000, we go 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 here at a nominal 25 degrees Celsius. That is normal, but we're going to 50%. So back down to 4,000, down to 3,000 cycles, up to 3,000 cycles. And let's remember, right, you know, up to that marketing term is somewhere up here on the failure distribution curve, right? Your average MTBF is going to be way back a little more. So, you know, instead of 3,000, we're talking like maybe 2,000-ish, something like that. 2,000 cycles is not a lot of cycles. If we're cycling twice per day, right? Well, that's 1,000 days, basically. That's essentially three years. And then if you go ahead and turn on gear guard, that cuts in half again. You're in the one to two year range to go ahead and kill your battery. That is why your batteries are freaking dying. One more thing from Electrify here. So I got my Rivian R1T PDM Max in early December, 2023. And within a few weeks, I'd heard about Electrify. I signed up for a, a one month trial subscription. So I have data from way back then when the vehicle was brand spanking new. And actually this day, December 28th, 2023, is my first like long sleep where essentially gear guard was turned off. And this was actually when the vehicle was at the Sacramento Service Center, getting an alignment done and several other minor bits and bobs taken care of. That's a seven hour sleep down here. And this would be the best longest sleep my vehicle had all the way through until the battery was replaced. And it actually got all the way down to six hours. So again, when gear guard is off, it's drawing basically one amp of power. So that is seven amp hours when brand new, degrading down to six hours. And now when I got this battery installed, it went up to eight hours. Here's the manufacturing code, January of 2025. So the funny thing is that the old battery had a manufacturing date code of June of 2023. So it sat there for six to seven months before I got it in my vehicle. And so I wonder if Rivian has kind of a supply chain problem. I mean, it could be a bad batch of batteries, could be. My educated guess though is a supply chain problem where the factory in normal Illinois, you know, probably gets the batteries by the pallet, no, not the pallet, by the shipping container full, right? And then they sit there for months, you know, poor temperature control, not having their voltages maintained, right? All the things that keep 12 volt batteries nice and happy isn't being done. And so uh, over that seven months, it degraded the battery. So I never had a good battery to even start with. And then this has bounced things up 
to a full eight amp hour worth of usable capacity. It's interesting stuff. And uh, if you appreciate content like this, please like, please subscribe, please share it with your friends and family. Thanks for watching and take care.